Hello, so I got a book nook for Christmas and I thought I would show you guys the process of me making it, but I thought it would probably be boring for you guys to watch four days of me gluing things together. So this ended up being more of a vlog. Enjoy. Hello, it's your girl. It's your girl. I don't know. Um, It is currently the day after Christmas, AKA my birthday. I was gonna film this yesterday, but I had to work a 12 hour shift on Christmas cause I work in healthcare. Yay! But I got some like bookish gifts. So like I got sword catcher. A. I got this Pride and Prejudice like ink pen set. Um so now I can like write letters as if I'm like Mr. Darcy or something. And now I have to learn how to do calligraphy. I have a lot of artsy hobbies, but calligraphy was not one of them. But if there is an artsy hobby, I will learn it. <laughs> um my sister got me this Lunar Chronicles coloring book and it's like so cool like, it's got like excerpts from the book and then like they have the scene drawn and you can like color it in and stuff and i love the lunar chronicles it's so fun it's like that peak early 2010s ya like should i do a video on the lunar chronicles also my friend who i've been friends with since we were literally like eight years old and sat with me during middle school lunches when I used to cry about Will Herondale because that was when I was like actively reading the books for the first time. She got me a little Jem Carster's necklace and it has a violin and it has a little dagger and it has like a little green gem. It was like the jade and like gem and he's a gem and like thank you Rachel. Shout out to my bestie Rachel who I spoiled the ending of Clockwork Princess 2 back in 2013. <laughs> and this is like what I'm really 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 excited about. Um. I got this like book nook that like goes on your bookshelf. I don't have a bookshelf yet. I have to buy one. All of my books are just like in stacks on the floor, but it looks like a fancy library, kind of like the London Institute library. And I'm like, so we're going to make this. But first we have to play some webkins. I don't know why I'm talking. Like, I don't know why like I'm pretending like you guys are like interested in my like everyday life. This is my pet Puffkins. He's my son, and this room I named the London Institute. Um, I have problems. I'm an adult, guys. Look, it's snowing in the game. See, it's named the London Institute, and then I have the London Institute Library. Look. All right, so I opened it up, and off the bat, I'm nervous. There's electrical stuff. I don't know shit about electricity. <laughs> Oh, sh don't tell me I gotta like cut all this stuff out and like glue it. This is gonna take forever. <laughs> I've, I've literally never heard of a number five battery before in my life. What? Number five battery? That's just a double A battery. Did I mention it's my birthday? This is cute. Like this is giving institute library, but it's also giving trauma. Like this is, this is, I have a feeling I'm going to lose my mind trying to make this. I asked for this for Christmas. I was like, I want one of those like DIY book nooks that are like wood that you have to make yourself. And it's like really complicated with lights and all these tiny little parts. Like buy me that for Christmas. It'll be so much fun. But guess what? Guess what 23 year old Brie, you are a fucking idiot. My frontal lobe's more developed now and it says you're a fucking idiot. I'm still an idiot now, but like that's, <laughs> nothing's changed. Am I like doxing myself by like telling you guys my birthday and like my profession? I'm like not on social media, so like hopefully not. I didn't post my real name, so I don't think anyone's gonna find me. Like Brie is not my real name, guys. So what audiobook should I listen to while I make this? Should I listen to Clockwork Princess? No, I'm gonna cry if I listen to Clockwork Princess. One of the scenes in the last chapter takes place on Christmas and I like wanted to finish the Clockwork Princess video so then it could come out on Christmas, but I only did the first half of Clockwork Princess. All right, we're gonna open this up. We're gonna do it, ow! Mother book nook one, Brie zero. Can I get, can I get an F in the chat? I've been rereading the Gemma Doyle trilogy by Libba Bray because I remembered that the second book takes place during Christmas. It's, it also takes place during the Victorian era. It's like a YA fantasy, gothic, kind of dark academia. It was the vibe, okay? And I really liked it back in middle school. Since I've gotten older, when I was in high school, I tried so hard to be like mature and adult and serious. And then like, now that I'm like an adult adult, I've gone back to liking things that I liked as like a kid. Like I have stuffed animals on my bed. I play webkins now. I just started playing webkins this year and it's so much fun. And like, it makes me so happy. And I'm like, 
why don't we just enjoy childish things you know like I'm rereading all these books that I liked as a kid like enjoy yourself guys why are we all serious you know like look it's Donald Duck look at him he's so cute all right so like these are the carts and it's giving London Institute Library you can see my fingers all like scraped up um oh library of books ideal books is the key to wisdom the fuck is that even vintage ah okay okay now we're talking look at this that's that's london institute right there oh look oh we got van gogh out here yo van gogh oh my god it's it's ceramic water jugs like the one that tessa used to hit will over the head the first time they met all right i'm gonna like look through the manual and start punching things out and see if I can figure out what's going on. So like the manual definitely was like originally written in like a different language, probably Chinese, and then like translated to English through like Google Translate or something. Cause it does not make sense. I feel like I'm losing my mind trying to read it. This is like so involved. Like you, you literally have to make the little books. Like you have to fold the pages and like glue them and then glue the cover and make the books. like. I can handle making a dumb little book nook. How hard could it be? All right, all right, hear me out. This guy as Will, Will Harrendale. <laughs> what? You sound like a dolphin, bro. I don't, part of me doesn't want them to ever make an adaptation of the Infernal Devices because they'd ruin it, but like imagine him as Will, like, I don't know. He's so tragic and hot, just like Will. Like this man, he's got the drama, like, like look at him hanging from that ship, like what? It was never that serious. <laughs> All right, so luckily, even though this didn't come with glue, being a crafty person comes in handy because I already have Mod Podge and wood glue on hand. Okay, so luckily the instructions have like pictures, so I don't have to worry about like any translation errors. I don't think it's gonna be too hard. It's just gonna take a while. All right, so it's been like an hour. I've made many, many tiny little books. The process involves cutting out the book covers, punching out these little wooden blocks, and then gluing the covers onto each and every individual little wooden block to make a little wooden book. And then, once that's done, then we gotta glue these into tiny little stacks. Alright, I started at 2.30. It's currently 5. And I've made so many freaking tiny books. And then these ones, they didn't even have wooden blocks. Like, these are wooden blocks. These ones, I had to freaking, like, glue the page. Like... What was the purpose? What was the purpose of having to make me... You're not going to see these. I just looked at the freaking manual. This stack of books, it's just going to be glued. It's just going to be glued, like, on top of the other books. Like, purpose. What was the purpose of making me spend all this time and effort into freaking making a book? It's, it's, it's late now. It's, it's night now. <laughs> I just got done watching The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Not to be one of those annoying people, but, like, the book was so much better than the movie. I was excited for the movie. It was fun, but like it just did not have the depth that the book did. But like Tom Blythe is hot, so. <laughs> Anyways, so for the next set of books, I hate the covers that they're for. I think these are kind of ugly and don't really match the vibe that I'm going for. I was like, well, this is just like a thick piece of paper. Like I could just print out my own covers. And then I saw that there's supposed to be this pile of books that goes on like the desk. So it's going to be very like prominent and you're going to be able to see it. So I thought, why not make it the Infernal Devices? These were the covers that are for the books that are going on the desk. So I got to make the cover of the Infernal Devices this big. It just occurred to me, I could have changed the covers for all of the books. And I could have made it the matching spines for like the mortal instruments and stuff like that would have been so good. I spent three hours making those books. I can't remake them, but I kind of want to. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm wasting hours of work right now. I, there's something wrong with me. Don't, don't try this at home, kids. So I just spent an embarrassingly long amount of time creating little dust jackets for these books. Um, I broke apart these books, six of them, so then I could do the mortal instruments and I did the matching spines. I like made a little paper dust jacket to make sure that like it would fit the book correctly. And this is a trick if you ever need something to print a certain size in real life. What you can do is you can change the percentage of zoom 
that's on your computer screen. You see I have it set to 118% zoom. So then what you do is you hold up a piece of paper to your laptop screen and make sure that the paper on the screen is the same size as the paper in real life. So then obviously when it prints, it's gonna print exactly the same size as it is on the laptop screen. Like I needed this to be this size. I was able to size it correctly on my laptop screen. So then printed that size in real life and now I can make the rest of the books. Um, here's the aftermath of last night. Ignore how messy my desk is. I've got like paint and Mod Podge all over it. All right, so I'm kind of like obsessed with these. Um, up close, they don't look super great. Um, but look, I've got the Dark Artifices. We got Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and then Queen of Air and Darkness. Oh, it's so cute. And then, of course, we've got The Last Hours. Yay! And I even have, like, the back cover on and, like, everything. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then, of course, I have the Infernal Devices. And this is going to be the books that I put on the desk. And you can see it's like got the back and everything like like I don't know like it's so cute and of course I have the mortal instruments matching spines and then even though this is the back cover I put the front cover of City of Bones just so then it would look cool and then I also just printed out this this is supposed to be a Tale of Two Cities you can't even see the text on it but it's Tale of Two Cities because you know Will and then on the inside cover I wrote WH because that's how Will signs his books so yeah nothing like making a casual 60 freaking books so yeah i spent all of yesterday making just this first page but like the rest of the stuff shouldn't be too hard it's just like gluing things together okay so i made oh so i made like this little cute easel and this little telescope and this little chair and then i made the desk now i'm supposed to glue this map on top that's like really nicely printed but i thought it would be funny if i printed out the infamous clockwork princess family tree that was like on the inside dust jacket of the first edition of clockwork princess i thought it'd be funny if i printed it and glued it onto the desk and then i have the books and then there's this painting that's supposed to be hung up and it was supposed to be like a van gogh painting but i switched it to the art on the inside of the dust jacket for queen of air and darkness because i love this art by alice duke and like i have this painting that's will and tessa by charlie bowder and it's so good it's coming along. Honestly, this the, the video probably wouldn't be that interesting. It's just me like gluing pieces of wood together and breathing in Mod Podge fumes. It's fine. So while I was gluing all this stuff together, I was listening to the audiobook for A Great and Terrible Beauty. Like I said, I was rereading the Gemma Doyle trilogy. I just finished it and it actually was like really good. I was worried because I liked it back in middle school, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna still like it now as an adult. But it was actually really good. It focused a lot on the friendship between the four main girls. The main character Gemma is like pretty badass and, and she does like a lot of like social commentary on society during the Victorian era and like calls out all the toxic bullshit and like Victorian culture and stuff. And a lot of this stuff was like also relevant to today. So it actually was pretty good. I will say there was stuff that did not age well. Um, This book came out in 2003. There was certain characters who were Romani um, and they used, you know, the G word with them, which we today acknowledge as a slur, but like back then, not so much. I think if the book was made today, the author probably wouldn't be using that word and certain things would be a little bit more tasteful. So that stuff hasn't aged well, but like the rest of the book was pretty good. I'm ready to start the second book now. It takes place during Christmas time, so perfect timing. Except my library doesn't have the audiobook for it, so I'm like, no. Luckily though, I have all of the physical books. I found them all in a thrift store a couple years ago and I was like, perfect. I'm just trying to prove, I do read books other than the Shadowhunter books, guys, I promise. <laughs> I don't know, Libba Bray's writing style was very like refreshing and fast paced and just so easy to get into. And it had some interesting themes too. And it like related the fantasy stuff to like the stuff that they were dealing with in their real lives. You know, they had to make some tough decisions about who they are you know, that everyone kind of has a bit of that goodness, but also darkness in them. I, I don't know. I, and it gets dark at the end. Like it gets so dark. I was really surprised. And the book had like barely any romance, but like, I didn't even notice because it was just so good. I just looked up some reviews for the book. Um, cause I was like, I need to see what other people think. Some of the top reviews were like, this book fucking sucked. I don't understand how anyone could find this good. It was so boring and predictable. I was like, Anyone with half a brain cell would agree that this book sucks. I was like, 
I don't appreciate your tone. I thought it was a beautiful book about friendship and finding yourself. Um, <laughs> but you know, not every book is for everyone. All right, time to get back to gluing things. You can see I started watching Carrie Can Read on my laptop. She ended up uploading her A Court of Frost and Starlight video like 20 minutes after I uploaded my Clockwork Princess video. I was like, <laughs> my influence, no. <laughs> All right, so um, there's like the electrical stuff under here. Kind of hard to see. It's 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 in there. There's electrical stuff, and we're starting to put the lights in. Um, and I have to screw the battery pack in. Okay, so I got the battery pack screwed on, and then I put this back piece into the wall, and I made all, sure all the wires for the lights came out here, and the one light here so i was confused about why this light was supposed to be here but there's this little hole on the side of the fireplace so when i glue the fireplace in then the fire turns on that's so cool day three give it up for day three i'm so tired of making this stupid book nook and gluing things together like it was fun at first but like now i just want it to be done um i could take a break from it and that would probably be a good idea but like, I wanna get this done, so no breaks. All right, so this is what we got so far. Lots of details, you know, I've got some wires that I gotta like tape up and stuff, but it's what it looks like with the light on. Wow. Okay, so it is now currently New Year's Eve, which is why I'm all fancy and dressed up, um, even though I'm not going anywhere for New Year's. <laughs> I had work, so I had to take a break from making the book nook, which is good because now I'm excited to finish it. It honestly wasn't that bad to make. I, I don't know why I was nervous. It was just very tedious. So I'm supposed to glue this bookshelf here, but as you can see, this piece, this little wall is not level. <laughs> so um, that's a problem. So I'm just gonna like, well, that fixed that. The end is in sight. We are on the last two pages. Two hours later. It's officially done. I don't want to touch a piece of glue for the next three months. All right, this is the reveal. Oh, fuck. There we go, this is the reveal. Here's what we got, here's what we got. So you can see the mortal instruments and then I have the dark artifices on top. Here we have the inside cover of Queen of Air and Darkness. A map, a clock, we got the light. In the back, you can see we got bookshelves in the back. On the second floor wall, you can see we have Will, Gem, and Tessa, Will, and Tessa. On the right, it's all four protagonists from the Shadowhunter books. And then on the first floor, we got our cute little desk with Clockwork Princess on it and the infamous Clockwork Princess family tree. I just put Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince on the floor. I didn't know what to do with it. And then on the right here, instead of putting the trophy and medals, I put the last hours. And then on this little book, I pasted a couple runes in. We got the Parapetai rune and the Angelic rune. I have the Infernal Devices and Chain of Iron right here. And then like you look inside and there's Chain of Iron right there. But yes, I love how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute. It happened. It's 2024. Happy New Year. <laughs> Another tribute has fallen. I don't have anything else to say except for happy holidays, happy new year. My father will hear about, no, I'm joking. <laughs>